getting a birth certificate. And then people will try to say, well, you know, uh, uh, the birth certificate, that's in some type of myth, you know, or something like that. And I'm looking at it. And, you know, you got to look at these people crazy because I study trust law, and I'm 100% convinced that's what it is now because I know when you start uh, studying unincorporated business organizations. Now, I, on my birth certificate, I got it right here in front of me right now. I got my birth certificate right here in front of me. I was born in Texas. I was born in Dallas, Texas. And I was, we got a nice-looking one. It looks real nice. And I, right at the bottom of it, it says American Bank Note Company. So I had to say, I said, well, damn, why is, uh, why is uh, American Bank Note Company making birth certificates? So y'all know me. I went and researched American Bank Note Company. I went and researched them. I pulled them up, and lo and behold, they are on Wikipedia. And it says, the American Bank Note Company was a major worldwide engraver of national currency and postage stamps. Currently, it engraves and prints stocks and bond certificates. That's all they do is stocks and bond certificates. So what is a bond certificate? A stock of bond security. <laughs> a security. It's a security. Yeah. So, this, so they got a security Revenue interest in goods. It's actually increased by 300% due to the recent bank failures, which have sparked a worldwide phenomenon in our industry. The industry that we deal with deals with arbitration. It deals with the ability to recoup capital for corporations and legal entities. We want you to, to join our team by contacting our office at 407-792-2774. We just launched on June 5th what we call our Trust Syntax Mastery Class. And this Trust Syntax Mastery Class will allow you, with no experience, to earn up to $30,000 per month in income. Yes, you heard it right. Earn up to $30,000 per month in income with no experience necessary. For more exclusive details, call our office today at area code 407-792-2774. Remember, these recent bank figures have increased our revenue by 300%, and we want to share the wealth with all of you. So join our team. Contact our office today at 407-792-2774 to join and enroll into our trust and tax mastery class, which actually started on June 5th. You can learn how to earn up to $30,000 per month in income with no experience necessary. Remember, if you listen long enough, you're dead. Well, that, that, that goods, again, that is something that is, for us being, is going to be sold for profit. Oh, well, it, that demand is a genius. They trade in your birth certificate on the stock market, man. I, I I agree with you on that, but 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 getting back to my initial point about commerce. Okay. If I go, go to the if I go to the store and and uh, purchase something, I purchased a, a finished a finished good, which is different than a good or goods. The person the the entity that is selling the goods is the one who is in commerce because they got, uh, let's say, for instance, a loaf of bread. That's not true. You're look, they you're purchased a loaf of bread from the bakery for the intent of selling it to a consumer. When the That's consumer buys it, they pay That's a tax. You look, and you looked at, go ahead. You look at as a merchant because you got Federal Reserve notes in your pocket. Those are certificated securities you got in your pocket. That Federal Reserve note that you just said, look at it closely. Peace, peace, peace and love, peace and love. You're live with your host, Bezel Bay. This is going to be a premiere coming directly from our headquarters. We're going to be going into the premiere and overview of the Trust Syntax Mastery Course and learning a little bit more about the intricate world of trust and trust administration. I am your host, Bezel Bay, and I will be your guide as we jump right into this and really break this down from the right perspective. I'm going to cover various different segments that actually are dealing with the trust 
syntax mastery course that is being held as we speak and I'm just kind of giving you like a precursor to some of the things that you'll learn um, from that by actually introducing to you in these things in seven segments segment one we're going to be discussing the introduction to trust administration and compliance um, and, and again understanding these things just from a perspective I kind of go through an overview uh, segment one like I said deals with the introduction to trust administration and compliance segment two deals with the navigating key platforms segment three deals with m3 asset conveyances segment four will cover trust on life insurance policy loans segment five will deal with the dividends reinvestment plan otherwise known as drips segment six will cover case studies and practical exercises and segment seven deals with compliance strategies and best practices now in this particular broadcast it's going to be very informative i ask that you take notes and reach out to the individual who referred you to this podcast here on wtdta radio we do not profess to give legal advice each and everything you're going to hear in this particular podcast is for educational purposes only so please use responsibly um with that being said let's now dive into this intricate world of trust administration now let's kind of look at this let's talk about this first segment in this segment we'll provide an introduction to trust administration and the important role of compliance officers in maintaining compliance compliance officers are responsible for ensuring that trust operations adhere to legal and regulatory framework also they deal with protecting the interest of beneficiaries and upholding the trust integrity let's kind of discuss this in a little more detail trust administration refers to the management and oversight of trust and which are also the legal arrangements where one party the trustee holds and manages the assets on behalf of another party the beneficiary compliance officers play a crucial role in ensuring that trust administration operates in compliance with applicable laws regulations and industry's best practices they establish and enforce policies and procedures to maintain transparency protect beneficiaries and uphold the integrity of trust operations this can be broken down into a couple of steps and i'm not going to go through all of them but i'm going to give you a few step number one in this aspect of the implementation or the administration that's involved with this particular um trust administration and compliance number one is we deal with developing and implementing compliance policies and procedures this consists of drafting implementing and updating policies on a regular basis and procedures to ensure compliance with applicable laws regulations and industry standards it also we work in establishing controls and protocols to prevent violations and detect potential compliance risks within the trust management operations the next step we deal with monitoring and assessing compliance this consists of conducting regular compliance reviews audits and risk assessments to identify any gaps and deficiencies in the trust management practices this monitoring also is a monitoring of ongoing compliance with legal and regulatory requirements and promptly addressing any non-compliance issues we for the last 36 months have been harping on current expected credit loss provisions a major hurdle for individuals who are in non-compliance or in non-compliance issues also keeping abreast of changes in the laws and regulations impacting trust administrations and updating the internal process accordingly third it deals with training and education and that's basically what you're getting right here designing and delivering training programs to educate trustees and staffs on compliance obligations ethics conduct ethical conduct excuse me and best practices we also are are in the business of promoting a culture of compliance by false by, by fostering awareness you know education fostering awareness and understanding of the legal and regulatory requirements throughout the organization the next step 
step four, we can say, um, deals with regulatory reporting and documentation. It's just like what it sounds. We deal with preparing and submitting required regulatory reports, such as DCF reports, DCF models, um, filings such as UCC filings accurately and within the specified timelines. You always document before you transact. Um, maintaining comprehensive and up to date documentation of compliance activities, including policies, procedures, reports, and training records. This is the, the core. And again, it's not all the steps, but this is the core that deals with the trust administration and the management in this capacity, which is the trust administration and a compliance proponent. That's segment one. Now we're coming to segment two. Segment two deals with navigating the key platforms. What are the key platforms? Well, let's explore the key platforms for a little while. Uh, key platforms for compliance officers and trustees rely on the platforms like Dun & Bradstreet, Euroclear, DTC and DTCC, and the CRIS, which stands for the Court Registry Investment System. These systems are used to navigate the complexities of trust management. So these are, in our opinion, the key platforms platforms that one can actually utilize but let's explore these let's start out with discussing the Dun and Bradstreet if you will okay there are several platforms that play a vital role in trust administration enabling trustees and compliance agents or officers to perform their duties e efficient efficient e effectively and efficiently these platforms include Dun and Bradstreet you are clear DTC and DTCC, and the Court Registry Investment System, otherwise known as the CRIS. Let's start with the Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet is a platform used for due diligence and risk management by providing information on businesses. It also includes financial data and credit reporting ratings and credit ratings. Euroclear facilitates settlement and custody of securities, ensuring efficient e effectiveness ensuring efficient and secure transactions. The DTC and DTCC, which stands for Depository Trust Company and Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, it enables secure and efficient securities transactions. Like you heard my, my mentor Yusuf L talked about securities in that capacity. And then we have the Court Registry Investment System, the CRIS. And the CRIS is utilized for investment management and court administered trust. Let's explore this a little bit deeper. Number one, Dun & Bradstreet. What is the purpose? The purpose of Dun & Bradstreet is a commercial data and analyst platform, analytics platform, that provides businesses with a comprehensive information about other companies. The functionalities include business verifications. Dun & Bradstreet provides, provides a unique identifying identification number or otherwise known as a Dunn's number which keeps which helps verify the identity and legitimacy of a business it also does credit risk assessments this platform offers credit risk assessment tools to evaluate the financial stability and credit worthiness of companies assisting trustees in assessing the risk associated with potential business relations or investments See, if you got a strong DUNS number, it's going to be real easy to get this thing insured and then reinsured. Also, it does supplier and vendor screening. Dun & Bradstreet enables trustees to screen suppliers and vendors to ensure compliance with relevant regulations and to assess their financial stability. I've been involved in transactions where we had to bring in a strategic partner that actually had a DUNS number to make an entity that didn't have a DUN number move in the level of compliance. So these things are enormous, are, are a normalcy. It's normal in, um, in this arena. Let's talk about Euroclear. Well, Euroclear, the purpose of Euroclear, Euroclear, first of all, is a leading provider of post-trade services for financial instruments. And these instruments include, you know, including, you know, the services include settlement, custody, and asset servicing. The functionalities of Euroclear is that it is a security settlement system. Security, it deal, it, it, their main function is security settlement. Euroclear facilitates 
a settlement of security transactions, ensuring the timely transfer of ownership and funds between parties involved in trust administration in the trust administration process. It also provides custody services. The platform provides safekeeping, like individuals who want to actually have an asset like uh, gold, where they want to use that equity to acquire more securities that are tied to real estate, then your clear is one of the many different types of systems that can be used to do so because they do provide custody services. Um, and then there's also asset servicing. Asset servicing is when you're, you know, when it comes to Euroclear, Euroclear offers various asset servicing functionalities such as income collections. They deal with corporate actions, processing, and they do proxy voting, which helps trustees manage assets held within trust efficiently. Let's talk about the DTC and DTCC. You guys are hearing me talk about these companies interchangeably. Well, the purpose of the DTC and DTCC is they are a centralized security depository and clearinghouse that provides custody settlement and other related services for a wide range of financial institutions. So they kind of like the counter or they're an addition to the Euroclear system. Think about one as international and then think about one as domestic. Um, the, the functionalities um, deal with a centralized security depository. The DTC and DTCC provides a centralized platform for electronic record keeping and transfer of securities, enabling efficient settlement and safekeeping of assets. They also have a book entry system. See, mortgage-backed securities are kept in a book entry format. These are the type of things that the DTC and DTCC provide. They have a book entry system. This platform maintains a book entry system which eliminates the need for physical certificates and streamlines the transfer of ownership of securities. Now, for those of us that are compliance officers, we do understand why it's in their best interest to keep everything digitalized. And for our clients who are out of compliance, how essential it is to have physical documentation. But that's a whole nother niche. Next, next, we talk about trade settlement. DTC and DTCC facilitates the settlement of security transactions by ensuring, ensuring, by ensuring the accurate transfer of ownership and funds between parties involved, which is used in reducing settlement risk. Well, let's talk about the next key to this platform, which is the court register investment system, the CRIS. What is the purpose of the CRIS? The CRIS is a specialized investment management and accounting system. I cannot stress the importance of compliance officers wrapping their brain around the fact that the CRIS isn't just a specialized investment management system but it's also an accounting system and this accounting system is used by the court registry office to manage and invest funds held in a court monitored account including trust accounts i want you to for for all intents purposes for compliance officers to really grasp that the chris is actually a trust what are the functionalities of the chris well, this is for trust fund management. See, the CRIS provides a feature to track and manage trust funds. This is why when you do UCC1s and UCC3s and 5s, these are all ways to track and manage trust funds, including investment allocations and also income distributions. And it also has an accounting function. This is why you're able to issue K1s directly into the court registry investment system. See... It also provides, and this is a caveat, compliance monitoring. This platform assists with compliance monitoring by generating reports. That's what those UCC control numbers are. They provide tracking investment activities and they maintain proper documentation ensuring adherence to legal and regulatory compliance. That is segment number two that deals with the key platform, the key, the navigating the key platforms. Now we come to segment three, which is one of my favorite segments in this whole course that, that's being taught. That is M3 Asset Conveyances. M3 Asset Conveyances, in my opinion, is one of my favorite aspects of the course. 
And let me tell you what it does. See, now we're going to dive into the fascinating world of M3 asset conveyances. Compliance officers must be well-versed in the legal regulatory aspects relating to these transfers. They must ensure compliance with state and federal laws and analyze tax implications and fulfill the necessary documentation requirements. So let us explore the step-by-step -step process involved in implementing an M3 asset conveyance. So we're going to take a drip take us a, a small trip and go into this from a bird's eye view. M3 asset conveyances refer to the transfer of assets between trusts. Compliance officers need to understand the legal response, the legal and regulatory aspects associated with these conveyances. This includes ensuring compliance with state and, and federal laws, analyzing tax implications and fulfilling documentation requirements. A step-by-step -step process is followed to implement M3 asset conveyances, ensuring a smooth and compliant transfer of assets between trusts. The purpose of M3 asset conveyances, one purpose is that the M3 asset conveyances aim to streamline the transfer of assets in trust administration, ensuring accurate, timely conveyances within maintaining proper documentation and compliance with legal regulatory requirements. We're going to call it the M3 system. The M3 system provides a centralized platform to facilitate these asset transfers, reducing administrative burden and enhancing efficiency. We're going to go into two types, two, two typical types of asset conveyances when it comes to M3s. There's many, but we're just going to talk about two. M3 asset conveyances can involve various assets such as real estate, properties, securities, cash, and other valuable assets. The process typically includes the transfer of legal ownership or beneficial interest in assets between the grantor, trustee, and beneficiaries of the trust. Now let's go into the steps involved in M3 asset conveyances. The process of M3 asset conveyances generally involve the following steps. And these are not all the steps. You know, this, the game is to be sold, not told. I'm just simply giving you the highlights. Uh, asset identification. The trustee identifies the specific asset to be conveyed, ensuring they comply with the terms and objectives of the trust. It also deals with due diligence. That's the next step. So first step, asset identification. Next step is due diligence. This is not, this is not all the steps. I'm just giving you the basics. The trustee performs due diligence on assets, verifying ownership, assessing value, and evaluating any legal and financial considerations associated with the transfer. The next step deals with documentation. The documentation basically goes in this capacity. The trustee prepares the necessary legal documentation to affect the conveyance, such as deeds, assignments, transfer funds. A lot of folks don't understand that deeds and assignments or transfer funds and other relevant instruments are essential. See, a 1040, a 1041, and a UCC1 are all financing statements. These documents establish the legal transfer of ownership or, or beneficial interest in assets. Uh, the next step deals with compliance checks. The trustee ensures compliance with applicable laws and regulations and internal trust policies throughout the conveyance process. This may involve conducting an anti-money money laundering checks. See, the reason why we question everyone about currency transaction reports is because that allows us to conduct our anti-money laundering checks that all competent fiduciaries must do when dealing in the aspect of commerce. It, re it requires the verifying the legal capacity of the parties involved. This is why you ask the attorneys and all involved to show you the last 90 days currency transaction reports and adhering to any specific requirements imposed by the M3 system or regulatory authorities. It also deals with record keeping, which is just like what it sounds. The trustee maintains proper records of the asset conveyances, including copies of executed documents. This is what we do to noting and minuting. It also deals with asset transfer. 
And this is where the magic really takes place. Once all the necessary steps are completed, the trustee initiates the transfer of assets through the M3 asset conveyance system. This may involve submitting the required documents following the designated procedures outlined by the system. Again, this is why it gets, re gets really fun for me because I really love uh, getting into the aspect of N3 conveyances. Now we come to segment four. Now segment four deals with trust on life insurance policy loans. It deals with trust on life insurance policy loans. And we're going to talk about this from a bird's eye view, if you will. See, trust on life insurance policies can be a powerful financial tool within trust. However, compliance officers must guide trustees in navigating the legal and tax considerations associated with these policies. Compliance with state insurance laws, federal tax regulations, and the trust instrument is essential. Let's now explore the strategy for effective management of trust on life insurance policies loans, taking into account legal requirements, risk, and the best interest of the beneficiaries. So again, trust on life insurance policies are financial tools utilized within trust. Compliance officers must guide trustees in the understanding of the legal and tax considerations associated with these policies. This includes compliance with state laws, state insurance laws, excuse me, federal tax regulations and terms and the terms outlined in the trust instrument. Effective management of trust owned life insurance policy loans involves assessing risk, maximizing benefits for beneficiaries and ensuring compliance with legal requirements. Number one. Trust on life insurance and trust administration. Trust on life insurance policies are often utilized as a financial tool to provide liquidity, facilitate wealth transfer, and protect the assets of a trust. These policies offer a death benefit that can be used to cover estate taxes, provide income to beneficiaries, and fund specific trust provisions. Trust-owned life insurance policies can be tailored to meet the specific needs and objectives of the trust and its beneficiaries. The policy terms, coverage amounts, and the beneficiaries can be structured to align with the trust goals and the grantor's intentions. The uh, process and considerations in the policy loans. Now let's go into the, the process and consideration in the policy. Trust on life insurance policy loans. See, trust on life insurance policies enable trustees to access cash value accumulated within the policy to meet the trust liquidities, the, the trust liquidity needs, or provide loans to beneficiaries. This process typically involves the following steps. Uh, step one includes the determining determining loan eligibility. Trustees, the trustees, trustees assess whether the trust on life insurance policy has a, has accumulated sufficient cash value to support a loan and evaluate the terms and considerations set by the insurance provider. Next step is there's a loan agreement. The trustee establishes a loan agreement specifying the loan amount, interest rate, and repayment terms and any collateral or security requirements. This is why we are going into a whole aspect of policy loans that, in, that require a transmittal letter, a UCC-1, a UCC-3, and 5 with a money transmittal bond. These are all part of the loan agreement. Also, the next step in, you know, from loan agreement is dealing with compliance and documentation. Trustees ensure compliance with applicable laws, trust provisions, and insurance policies. They document the loan transactions properly and maintain records and adhere to any reporting obligations. The next step is repayment. Trustees monitor and manage loan repayments, including interest payments and principal repayments in accordance with the loan agreement. What are the benefits of a trust on life insurance policy loan? Well, let's talk about it. One of the benefits is liquidity. See, trust on life insurance policy loans provide a source of liquidity for a trust, allowing trustees to access funds without liquidating other trust assets. Another benefit is flexibility. 
Trustees have the discretion to determine the loan terms, interest rate, and repayment schedules based on the trust needs and beneficiary circumstances. Another benefit is lower, lower borrowing costs. A trust on life insurance policy loan often offers competitive interest rates compared to the traditional lending options, making them an attractive choice for meeting the trust liquidity requirements. Another benefit is tax advantages. The trust proceeds from a trust on life insurance policy are generally tax free, providing potential tax benefits to the trust and its beneficiaries. Well, what are the risks and legal implications of a trust on life insurance policy loan? Well, one of the risks is policy lapse. See, a failure to repay the loan and accrued interest within the policy's terms may result in a policy lapse and potentially leading to a tax consequence and loss of insurance coverage. Another risk and limitation is the impact on death benefits. Outstanding loans may reduce the death benefit payable to the trust beneficiaries upon the insurer's individual's death. Another risk and or legal implication is compliance and documentation. You see, if you keep track of everything, you're good. But trustees have to remember they must, in, they must ensure compliance with applicable laws, trust provisions, and insurance policies when implementing a trust on life insurance policy loan. Failure to comply may result in legal and financial implications. And then another risk and legal implication is the, re is the review of policies. See, if you do everything right, the periodic review will be great because trustees should periodically review the trust on life insurance policies to assess their performance, cost effectiveness, and overall suitability for the trust objectives now that segment which is segment four is big in our space this is not like a lot of individuals get interested in becoming a compliance officer operating in trust for that sole purpose these are key the next segment we're going to discuss the next segment we're going to discuss in detail is going to be the drip which is the dividends reinvestment plan. Dividends reinvestment plan. We say DRIPS. That's the acronym. What are DRIPS? Well, let's explore dividends reinvestment plans, which are commonly known as DRIPS, which, which they actually provide uh, trustees with a powerful mechanism for reinvestment. They reinvest dividends earned from trust investments. Compliance officers must guide trustees in implementing DRIPS in accordance with legal and regulatory requirements. We'll discuss the considerations of such, such as compliance with federal and tax laws and the documentation requirements and strategies for maximizing returns while maintaining compliance. This is a very interesting subject dealing with DRIPS. Now, DRIPS which are dividends reinvestment plans, enable trustees to reinvest dividends earned from trust investments back into the trust. Compliance officers play a crucial role in ensuring that trustees implement DRIPS in compliance with legal regulatory requirements. This includes considerations such as compliance with federal tax laws, documentations, and maximizing returns while safeguarding the trust interests. One of the things we, in, we push in that direction when it comes to maximizing returns is we encourage all participants in DRIPS to be embarking on what we call an 8302 return. And if you want more details, please reach out to our office at 407-742-2774. Did I get that right? Did I say that right? Um, Reach out to our office, because if you reach out to our office, you'll definitely get the gist of how this stuff really works. Here's the concept and purpose of the DRIP in trust administration. DRIPs are investment programs that allow shareholders to automatically reinvest their cash dividends back into additional shares of the company stock. In trust administration, DRIPs can be utilized to enhance wealth accumulations and long-term investment growth. The concept and purpose of DRIPS and dividends administrations are as follows. 
They deal with what accumulation of wealth, which is which where the drips enable the trust the trust beneficiaries to compound their interest returns by reinvesting dividends, leading to an acquisition of additional shares over time. This could result in a potential capital appreciation and increased wealth within the trust. There's also long term investment strategies. Drips align with a long term investment approach as the reinvestment drips contribute to the growth of the trust's investment portfolio. By participating in a drip, trusts can benefit from the power of compounding and potentially enhance their overall investment returns. Not giving investment advice, not going to go into the power of compound interest, but you guys kind of get the drift. Now we go into the process and considerations in implementing drips. The implications, the implementation of drips in trust administration involves several steps and considerations, which you know, again, I'm not going to go to all of them, just going to give you a few, including the selection of eligible stocks. Trustees need to identify the stocks held within the trust that offer drip programs. These typically include stocks of publicly traded companies that have enabled drip offerings. Enrollment in drip programs. Trustees or other authorized representatives of the trust must complete the necessary enrollment procedures to participate in the DRIP program. This may involve submitting the required forms and documentation to the company's transfer agent or custodian. Then the, the dividends reinvestment process. Once enrolled, the trust dividends are automatically reinvested by the transfer agent or custodian. The reinvestment dividends are typically used to purchase additional shares of the same company stock. You're also going to be dealing with tracking and reporting, where the trustee must accurately track the reinvestment dividends and the resulting additional shares acquired through the drip. This information is crucial for proper accounting, valuation, and reporting purposes within the trust. We typically at this level, when you're doing LBOs, we really dive into LBOs, LCOs, leverage buyouts, leverage cash out, and we also practice hedging accounting. The benefits, risk, and legal implications associated with DRIPS are, here's the benefits, you deal with compound growth, cost efficiency, and hold on. Uh, automated investments. The risk you deal with, you know, it's a concentration of risk. And you also have market volatility. These things we discuss in great detail as compliance officers by providing a, applicable strategies. And these applicable strategies give you the framework, which now brings us to segment six, which are the case studies. These case studies and practical exercises that make all this happen. Now, let's talk about the case studies and practical exercises from a certain perspective, if you will. Let's apply our knowledge to real world scenarios through case studies and practical exercises. Compliance officers and trustees can engage in hands on exercises that simulate trust administration. See, in this particular course, we allow trustees to practice real world scenarios through case studies to give you the practical exercises. These exercises will allow participants to analyze complex cases, develop problem solving skills and reinforce their understanding of the legal requirements. Through an active participation, trustees and compliance officers will gain valuable experience and confidence needed to excel in their professional roles. Now, we do a whole lot of research, and this is why this, this, this induction in the public of this new AI technology has actually accelerated the compliance officers and trustees' ability to really absorb these case studies and practical exercises. See, uh, the exercises simulate trust administrations and compliance challenges, providing opportunities to analyze complex cases and develop problem solving abilities and reinforce understanding of the legal requirements. By actively participating in these exercises, trustees and compliance officers gain hands-on experience. This is why we, we're promoting it where a compliance officer can earn 35 grand a month. 
just by doing these exercises. You can do a simulation and then use those simulations to be applied in real world scenarios. Um, and these simulations, you're, you're actually applying knowledge and skills to real life scenarios in trust administration. In the previous models, participants have gained the knowledge and development skills in various aspects of trust administration, including compliance. And they use key platforms and they deal with M3 asset conveyances. They, do, they deal with trust on life insurance policy loans, dividends reinvestment plans, compliance strategies and best practices to solidify their understanding and ensure practical application, participants will now have the opportunity to apply their acquired knowledge and skills to, to real life scenarios in trust administration. This will involve analyzing and solving complex trust related problems through case study and practical exercises. Again, participants will engage in case studies. They will brush up in the aspect of critical thinking these things is where the AI tools pick up and become your own personal assistants. Now we come to the final segment, which is compliance strategies and best practices. Well, let's talk about it from this perspective. Compliance officers play a crucial role in establishing effective compliance framework. This involved developing policies, procedures, controls, and conducting periodic audits and risk assessments and staying updated with the legal and regulatory changes. Compliance officers must ensure trustees adhere to the best practices, mitigating risk, protecting beneficiaries, and maintaining regulatory compliance is an ever-evolving legal landscape. Uh, the framework does consist of legal and regulatory compliance. It also deals with fiduciary duty and duty of care. It also deals with protecting benefits, beneficiaries, also mitigating risk and effective compliance strategies. To ensure effective compliance in the trust administration, trustees should consider following the following strategies and best practice. You must also get into the habit of regular monitoring and risk assessment, documentation and record keeping. This is why we stress with all of our compliance officers the importance of noting and minuting, which reverts back to your civil law notary training. I hope that this brief tutorial and explanation prepares you for the exciting world of being a compliance officer. We cannot wait for you to enroll into our Trust Syntax Mastery class. And with that being said, keep listening, family, because if you listen long enough, you will learn something. Peace and love.